J.D. Vance was winning on style until the January 6th question. Chris Graham here, Augusta Free Press. So credit to JV, J.D. Vance. He did his best to dial back his Ivy League dorkiness. And for most of Tuesday's 90-minute debate on CBS News uh, with uh, Democratic vice presidential nominee Tim Waltz, uh, Vance almost came across uh, as relatable, uh, even borderline reasonable. I mean, I'll give him credit for that. Um, through the maze of lies, he seemed like someone who you know wanted to at least listen to to other viewpoints and, and consider other ideas. His problem came at the end of the night, though, when the subject that matters most to an all important audience of one came up, and you know what that one would be, January six, twenty twenty one. What President Trump has said, Vance said, among the many things he said, is that there were problems in 2020. And my own belief is that we should fight about those issues, debate those issues peacefully in the public square. And that's all I've said. And that's all that Donald Trump has said. Remember, he said that on January 6th, the protesters ought to protest peacefully. I'm going to stop there for a second. And then on January 20th, what happened? Joe Biden became president. Donald Trump left the White House. That was Vance. Uh, on the debate uh, last night, uh, he was asked point blank by Nora O'Donnell if he would, quote, again, seek to challenge this year's election results, even if every governor certifies the results. Now, you don't need me to tell you that Donald Trump did not say that his uh, his supporters needed to protest peacefully. But rather, he told them moments before the thousands swarmed the U.S. Capitol to, quote, fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. That's what Trump said. Um. And that was after Trump and his legal team had already filed more than 60 legal challenges to the 2020 election, lost all of them. After Trump had tried to pressure officials in Georgia to find him more votes that's, so they could win that state. After Trump had tried to pressure Vice President Mike Pence to agree not to certify the election at the ceremonial January 6th meeting of Congress. 140 police officers were beaten at the Capitol that day, some with the American flag. Several later died, Waltz said in response to uh, Vance on this. Um, and it wasn't just there. Walt said in Minnesota, a group gathered on the state capitol grounds in St. Paul and said, we're marching to the governor's residence and there may be casualties. The only person there was my son, who was rushed out crying by state police. Let that sink in for a second. Let that sink in for a second. Um, you could tell from watching Vance on the split screen as this played out from the look on his face, the body language. He didn't want to be there answering that question in front of cameras. As comfortable as he had been on the deflecting on his past statements on abortion rights, misrepresenting tw Trump's 2017 tax cuts for the rich, trying to blame Kamala Harris for things that happened when it was actually Trump and Pence in a White House. Vance was doomed to having to do this, though, <laughs> because that's you know just part and parcel to the whole thing here. So he did his best. Yeah, Part of another answer from, from Vance. Yeah, well, look, Tim, first of all, it's really rich for Democratic leaders to say that Donald Trump is a unique threat to democracy, when he peacefully gave over power on January the 20th. As we have done for 250 years. That's what Vance continued to say. Um, ignoring the obvious. Not only was the transfer of power not peaceful. I mean, he you know denied uh, the Biden team transition funds to make it harder for them to be able to take over when they got uh, the reins of power on January 20th. Trump wasn't even there on January 20th. He left town before the inaugurations of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, the source of sore losers. So Vance at this stage, he's just trying to stanch the bleeding. And he, so he called back on his debate prep where it had been decided by his handlers from the Trump campaign that he needed to try to pivot from January 6th to efforting to pin the COVID era social media censorship that we saw on Harris which might work with people who don't remember a scant four years later, it's only been four years, that Harris and Biden did not take office until we were nearly a year into the pandemic. And that what that means is that the anti-vaxxers and the MAGA base were already nearly a year into claiming they were being censored in the Trump administration, right? The other pre-approved talking point from the Vance debate prep was to conflate how Hillary Clinton, after her 2016 loss, had pointed to the misinformation campaign financed by the Russian government to benefit the Trump campaign. And Vance tried to make that somehow equivalent to Trump trying to get election officials in Georgia to find him more votes, pushing his vice president to not certify the election, and then riling up a mob to fight like hell. Vance said, and he said this, this is a quote, that to me is a much bigger threat to democracy than what Donald Trump said when he said that protesters should peacefully protest on January the 6th. As Vance tried his best to tap dance around all this, Walls went straight at him. Quote, 
This was a threat to our democracy in a way that we had not seen, and it manifested itself because of Donald Trump's inability to say he is still saying he didn't lose the election. I would just ask that. Did he lose the 2020 election? That's what Walls asked Vance. And then Vance responded, Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? Again, 2020, Kamala Harris couldn't censor anybody. Even, of course, a president couldn't censor anybody in 2021 either. But if anybody was going to be censoring anybody, you'd think it might be the actual sitting president? Walls said this is a damning non-answer. It was a damning non-answer. Uh, Vance said back for you not to talk about censorship. And he actually went back to his debate prep at this point, and it had him pivoting to, and I'm not making this up, he actually defended the, quote, First Amendment right to misinformation. Quote, Kamala Harris wants to use the power of government and big tech to silence people from speaking their minds. That is a threat to democracy that will long outlive this present political moment, Vance said. So just to be clear there, J.D. Vance, United States Senator, candidate for vice president, who would be a heartbeat away from the presidency if elected beside an obviously deteriorating 78-year-old man, wants you to believe that there's a First Amendment right to misinformation and that it's a bigger issue to democracy to silence people from speaking their minds, disseminating obviously false information. Like, oh, let's say just for instance, that Haitians are eating cats and dogs than to overturn an election result and try to overturn an election result. I'm pretty shocked by this, Wall said. He, Trump, lost the election. This is not a debate. It's not anything anywhere other than a Donald Trump's mind. Because look, when Mike Pence made that decision to certify the election, that's why Mike Pence isn't on this stage. That one had to hit close to home for J.D. Vance because no doubt the vetting process emphasized the correct answer to the question, did I lose in 2020? If he didn't believe it when it was first asked of him and he didn't believe it last night, he still had to pretend that he believed it. It's too late for Team Trump to dump Vance from the ticket, but hey, accidents happen if you catch my drift. I'd like to think that J.D. Vance is a smarter guy than to believe that Trump peacefully handed over power and that it's not an issue that four years later Trump still seems to believe the 2020 election was stolen. What should concern us is that J.D. Vance is that smart a guy, and what would happen if he and Trump were to get elected in November, not so much here and now, but years in the future. Here was Walls with the money quote. What I'm concerned about is where is the firewall with Donald Trump? Where is the firewall if he knows he could do anything, including taking an election, and his vice president is not going to stand to it? He made clear there, Walls did, that the question here isn't so much about 2020, not even 2024. It's about 2028 and beyond. That's what we're asking you. Will you stand up? Will you keep your oath of office even if the president doesn't, Walls said? It's a fair question. Fair question. If you have anything for me, please feel free to email me at chris at augustafreepress.com.